Hello there, come on in. Well, I suppose it's fair to say we're all living through historic times, and I, well, I hope I live long enough to see how it's viewed when we look back. I suspect many of those in charge will not be remembered kindly, and that some of the minutiae with which we are currently obsessed will seem a little odd. Uh, Britain has been rather obsessed this week with focusing on how a senior government aide thought the best way to test his eyesight was to go for a long drive, and how many times a four-year-old needs to stop for the toilet. I know, if you don't live here, it probably appears absurd. Getting the truth of any event is hard. As well as my books, I read many history websites, and from dozens of them you can learn that it was May the 29th in 1576 that the Spanish army under General Cristobal de Mondragón conquered the Zyric Sea. Okay, here's the problem with having an inquiring mind. Where the hell is the Zyric Sea, I thought? I've never heard of it. And that is because there is no such sea. There is a city called Zyrig Z in the Netherlands, which, like pretty much anything Dutch, is near the sea, and that did have some bother with the Spanish in 1576, but not, as far as I can work out, on May the 29th. Oh, facts, 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 they can drive you mad. Uh, there do seem to have been plenty of other opportunities on May the 29th for men to battle it out at sea. Uh, Battle of Gallipoli on May the 29th, 1416, Venetian versus the Turks. Uh, spoiler alert. The Venetians won. Uh, 1692, Battle at La Hogue, English versus the French, English won. Oh, it's like giving out very late football results. Anyway, it's the sort of thing you find boys doing in history all the time. Not content with killing each other on land, the males of the species have also done their best to do it while bobbing about in boats. You don't hear a lot about women on the high seas, and that's a pity because there have been some corkers. If we know anything about girls taking the helm of a ship and shouting a vast behind, then probably the most familiar names are those of Mary Reed and Anne Bonny. Uh, hard to find specific dates for them as they were both pirates who historically have not been keen on paperwork. Uh, I have a book on pirates uh, and they are the only women in it. Uh, the author can't help himself but call them names like Hellcats and Banshees and Amazons instead of just telling us the story. Mary Reed was born sometime between 1670 and 1698 in London, England. It is a common story. Uh, Mary's mother had married a sailor. He went to sea where he was foolish enough to perish, leaving her with a baby boy. Fortunately, her mother-in-law was rich and could support her. Unfortunately, Mrs. Reed fell for another sailor, got pregnant, and then her first son died. In order to persuade the first, rich mother-in-law, to continue financial support, Mrs. Reed would need to give birth to another boy and pass him off as the first son. That's when Mary came along. A female disappointment. Undaunted, Mrs. Reed dressed Mary as a boy and passed him off as the son. In 17th century Europe, boys and girls dressed the same until they were about five or six, so it seemed like a plan. The ruse totally worked and old rich mum-in-law kept on supporting them till she died. Now, as it happens, Mary loved being a boy and wanted to carry on, so she did the next logical thing in this strange tale. She joined the navy, then she joined the army, then the cavalry, all the woman liked to fight. Unfortunately, while fighting, she fell in love with a Flemish soldier. Soon, her campmates were daring to suggest she was a homosexual, so she told them the truth. Well, the man was thrilled. Getting any woman in a war zone was tricky at the best of times. And it's a lovely story. They got married, they opened a pub in Holland, but before there could be a happy ending, Mr Flemish up and died. Mary went back to what she knew. She dressed once more as a boy and headed to the West Indies on a merchant ship. Meanwhile, Anne Bonny was growing up in Ireland. For complicated reasons, she too was dressed up as a boy by her mother. It seems to have been a very popular thing around then. Anyway, check out the whole story, but suffice to say she ended up in the Bahamas where, age 16, she eloped with a sailor called James Bonney. Right, back to Mary Reed at sea. Her ship was captured by pirates who spoke English. So did Mary, and this seems to have been enough to receive an offer to join the piratical crew. So she did. Eventually, Mary and Anne would meet and serve under Calico Jack, an English pirate captain in the Bahamas, most famous, well, for his association with them. 
It did not end well. Jack's entire crew were eventually arrested. And it says something about life on board that both women were able to plead their bellies using pregnancy to stay their execution. Mary seems to have died in prison, possibly from complications after childbirth, while Anne simply disappeared. Neither woman seems to have been a particularly remarkable pirate. The fascination is that they were women at all. So is that it for female pirates? Not at all. In fact, someone who's not even in this book is the most successful pirate of all time, male or female. Ching Shi, or Madame Ching, ruled the China Seas in the early 19th century. She was born in 1775 and seems to have been captured by pirates at the age of 15 and set to work as a prostitute on a floating brothel. Clearly she was smart because by the time she was 26 she owned the place and caught the eye of a notorious pirate called Cheng I. Cheng was a powerful man from a long line of pirates but it wasn't quite enough to turn a young woman's head. Before she agreed to marry him, Madame Ching insisted on a prenup. Equal shares in everything, all the booty, all the plunder, even the command from the ship's deck. She must have been something, because he agreed and they married. Together they created the most powerful pirate organisation in the world, known as the Red Flag Fleet. When Cheng died, Madame Cheng did not waste time. She took control of the red flag and of the seas. Two years later, an East India Company employee named Richard Glasspool was captured by her pirates, and he estimated that her fleet consisted of 800 large junks or ships and a 1,000 smaller ones. Compare this to the pirate Blackbeard, who is way more famous. In the same century, he commanded just four ships and 300 pirates. Her nautical empire was run with strict laws. Anyone failing to obey an order could be beheaded instantly. Perhaps the most interesting law for a woman-led crew were the ones related to sex. Any pirate who raped a female captive would be put to death. If the sex had been consensual, they would both die. Ugly female captives were released, although who was the judge of that? I do not know. Anyone in authority who could tried to stop her gangs as they raided camps and ships, river towns and coastal villages, but no official or naval fleet was able to stop her. In the end, it was an offer of amnesty from the Chinese government which brought her reign to an end. In 1809, she surrendered, but not before she had done her usual brilliant deal. She was pardoned, the family were allowed to retain many ships for use in the salt trade, and some high-ranking pirates in her crew even got jobs in the Chinese bureaucracy. Madame moved to Macau and opened a gambling house and a brothel. Maybe that was for old time's sake. She died in her bed, aged 69, having seen out her days in peace and quiet. The most successful pirate lord in history, a lady who ended her life a free woman. You know, I'd never thought of becoming a pirate, and uh, when I get out of here, you think I was going to... I might just try, and um, I might just try and conquer the Zyrix Sea. Uh, I've got a sword, and, um, and I also found some crew. Okay, it's all a little bit small, but I think that the Zyrix Sea is not that tricky to master. I'll let you know how I get on. <gasps> Maybe I'll make the history books. Take care. Be kind. Stocks is now available in podcast form. Check the description below for links to listen and subscribe.